So the reason we're doing this is to figure out what can we use algae to make money with. Well, you can do it by making nutraceuticals. Pigments are very expensive. You can get the fats out, the lipids that are valuable. You can use it as food or food additives. The main algae right now used for these value-added products is Denaliella tertiolecta. It's up to 37% oil by weight. It can live in very saline environments, so it's usually grown in salt pans where people are collecting salt. The main thing is when it's under stress, it produces many valuable carotenoid pigments, and you can see it's bright red in these salt pans. The main pigments collected are beta-carotene, the part that makes carrots orange. Most of the world's supply is derived from Denaliella, and it's used as a dietary supplement as an antioxidant, and then sold in anti-aging creams and dyes. The really valuable carotenoid is astaxanthin. It comes from Hematococcus pluvialis. It's used in nutraceuticals as an antioxidant, but the big interest is it can cross the blood-brain barrier and may be helpful in preventing traumatic brain injury. In the red algae and the cyanobacteria are the phycobilly protein antenna. These are water-soluble proteins that are red and blue. Phycoerythrin, the red one, is the world's brightest fluorophore and it's used in the medicine industry. The blue pigment is used to stain your food, your beverages, and is really used a lot in makeup. The phycobilla proteins contain two pigments. The first is phycocyanin, that's the blue-green one that you get from cyanobacteria that's used to make your drinks blue. Phycoerythrin is just small changes from phycocyanin, shown by the arrows, but it changes the color to red, and this is very fluorescent if you shine UV light on it and it's used in the medical industry to track molecules. To give you an idea of the value of these pigments, phycocyanin that's pure is $1,200 a kilogram, the blue one. Phycoerythrin that's pure is about $900 a kilogram. Other highly sought after compounds include polyunsaturated fatty acids or PUFAs. The most expensive ones are the omega-3 fatty acids, eicosapentaenoic acid, and docosahexanoic acid, EPA and DHA for the real people. Both of these are necessary lipids in animals, but you can't make them. You have to get them from your diet. The traditional source is fish oil. If we can make them from algae, it can be made cheaper and with less environmental impact. The omega-3 fatty acids are very important for human development, both in cardiovascular disease, development of infants, preventing cancers, as implications in mental health, it can reduce the rate of eye damage. People taking chemotherapy, it helps to prevent hair loss. It can increase the fertility in males. And it can increase the gene expression of collagen and elastic fibers in skin, so it helps make your skin young. The source of much of our omega-3 fatty acids and other nutrients actually comes from seaweed, which are algae. And the biggest source is sushi. Nori, which is porphyra, is the most common seaweed in the world, and it's a major industry in Japan. Another main industry for algae is those dietary supplements. Some cyanobacteria do produce toxins, so you have to be careful about how you grow them. But the majority of it comes from Klamath Lake in Washington right now. And as you can see, there's a little boat running through green water, harvesting it, making money. The biggest dietary supplement algae in the world is Arthrospira, which has been called spirulina in the past and still called spirulina. And as you can see from the image from a commercial spirulina company, it will solve all the world's problems. Actually, it doesn't really solve all the world's problems, and some of those are actually snake oil, but it does work for most of the things they claim. Algae have been used over years as food additives. The main one that you think of is carrageenan. It's a mucopolysaccharide from red algae, the species Chondrus crispus, or Irish moss, and the main use that you know of it is for making ice cream. Alginic acid comes from brown algae, and it's used as an emulsifier. That means it keeps oil and water mixed. It's in a lot of products where you don't want the oil and water to separate, and it can absorb up to 200 to 300 times its weight in water, so it acts like a good jello. Agar is very useful. It comes from also red algae. It's used in science to make petri dishes because it's a high gel in capacity and a wide pH working range. It's very resistant to heat, and you can melt it and start over again. It doesn't affect the flavor. It's used in a lot of jellies and jams, but the main way you know it is spam. Algae can also be used to feed animals. It's high in nutrition and low in cost. It provides many of the essential proteins, sugars, and fatty acids. Right now it's commonly used in aquaculture and also with cattle, poultry, and pigs.
Algae represent an untapped source for many products and chemicals that we still don't know about, but you can use them for nutraceuticals, pharmaceuticals, therapeutic agents. There's big business in health and beauty. You can get specialty chemicals, and plastic can be made from them. Finding these new products is like finding a needle in a haystack, and this is where the research part is very important. The algae Pleurochrysis carteri is a coccolithophore. This means it makes a calcium carbonate shell. They have a large potential use at taking carbon dioxide from the air, turning it into chalk, and sinking it to the bottom of the ocean. They're also the only real non-animal source of vitamin B12. They grow very fast. Up to 33% of their weight can be oil. Diatom algae are very useful, mostly because their cell wall is glass. The diatomaceous earth is used as pool filters. It's also used as an insecticide. If you've ever had your teeth cleaned, it's because they have algae in the agent for polishing your teeth. It's used to make dynamite, paint, all other sorts of commercial products. It's used in high temperature and sound insulation. You use it to filter beer wine. And it's also used to measure resolution and contrast in light microscopy as standard so you know how big what you're looking at. Algae have a big role to play in bioremediation. That's using living things to clean up the mess. One of the biggest uses will be taking carbon dioxide out of flue gas from coal burning power plants or natural gas power plants. If the algae take the CO2 out, you can use it to reburn, and all the CO2 you put in the air came out of the air. Algae also make great fertilizer. If you use the whole cell biomass, you're basically putting all the nutrients that you took out of the water into the soil. If you're using residual biomass, what's left over after you extract the compounds that you want, you still have lots of nutrients that can be placed into the soil, improve the soil, and help grow your plants. Because algae are so good at taking up nitrogen and phosphorus, it's also useful for removing nitrate and phosphate from wastewaters, either agricultural, sewage, or gray water from industry. If you clean up the water with algae, you have a product that you can use as a fertilizer, fuel, or even just use it to feed pigs if you want to. It's much more effective and much more efficient at cleaning up wastewater than the current chemical methods with a lower footprint. As you can see in this slide, there are hundreds of products that can be made from algae products. It's a huge industry and constantly expanding because algae are easy to grow and cheap to grow.